Welcome back to Equal Time Soccer. We are really happy to be joined. Uh, my co-host, as usual, Danny Foxhoven Young. Danny, we've got one of your old buds, a returning guest to the show. And this is someone, look, she's an All-American, Danny. She's a pro. She, she played at the University of Michigan. Maybe she's the best keeper ever. We'll have to ask her that question. <laughs> Get ready for it. Played for the Arizona Rush, the Seattle Rain, Apollon, Limassol, Brisbane Roar, Canberra United, and the Orlando Pride, and probably some other summer league teams that she didn't mention in an interview I listened to. She's a content strategist for Just Women's Sports. She also was an NWSL marketing intern at Anheuser-Busch. Also, the last and most important title of all, a community owner of Minnesota, Aurora Haley Kotmeyer. And don't forget Dog Mom to Still Ricky. Dog Mom to Ricky. That's my yeah. primary <laughs> title now. Ricky was on, I rewatched the interview so as to not, you know, horribly duplicate things. And I had forgotten about your adorable little dog, Ricky. Yeah. He just is the cute. I know. I, I'll, I'll pull him in here at some you, point. You can go to Haley's Instagram and see updates on Ricky. But I saw Ricky as a puppy and I almost died. <laughs> I get it. Yes, I Haley, it. thank you for coming on again. I don't want to hear it from anybody about having another Pacific Northwest friend on. Haley is a gem. We all love her. So. Uh, so welcome. She's Are you that. catching heat for that, Dan? Well, I feel mostly from Mark and Matt. <laughs> I just joke. I, no, I joke that I don't care. Yeah, I'm going to take who we can get, baby. I don't care. I, there's no problem with me if we got to focus <laughs> on the Northwest. But I did see, I saw, Haley, I was watching one of your shows just on YouTube. Saw you tore your calf in a pickup game. Oh, recently. I did. How, how's it going, bud? Tough. I'm, I'm, I'm recovered. But yeah, no, that really took me down and out. That's been taking me out of my like adult league sort of status recently Humbling. Um, were you playing in goal or were you playing no on danny this okay, is my time. she's a forward this is my say. time to shine in adult league now and also Good like for you this one was co-ed but i was like doing this woman's game league too and i was ripping it up like i had i mean honestly one of the best seasons of my life until this calf injury <laughs> happened i know that my team probably was very bummed to lose me honestly i've never spoken so highly about myself in terms of my playing <laughs> career as i do as my <laughs> seven to ten game performance in this adult league. <laughs> are you like trying to make your friends go watch you in the adult league no i wanted to show up silently and just like ball out and it was great too because there was like a few people who were like did you play in high school i'm like technically yes <laughs> Technically, Great technically, owner. yes, but not out here. You probably were going for golden goal, like golden boot. Uh, I mean, I was on pace. I was yeah. undoubtedly on That's pace. Impressive. And honestly, still not a speed player, but just like hold up. <laughs> Very smart. Yes, yeah, <laughs> hold up either center forward or like kind of sit in that 10 and just, I was dishing. I was just feeding people. I was turning and doing huh? it myself. Yeah. <laughs> good for you well i'm sorry to hear about the injury as well That's thank great. you no this one actually and i and i'll be honest this one was in like a 7v7 co-ed thing um and it was it was like kind of this it honestly it was just like a tough day and i'll say this because it was it was that um the drag queen soccer league in cap hill you know um, the one i'm talking about Dan? yes i do yeah and so it was raining, so they couldn't have the halftime drag performance and oh. i turned my calf and like oh. i had to put this like melted bag of peas on my calf and I like oh. had to be carried out it was honestly just pathetic <laughs> yeah that is that's the worst it's the humbling worst. yeah talk speaking of the women's game I, I was just seeing I don't know if you've seen this Haley just in the world you do with content creation but the soccer tournament which is a spin-off of the basketball tournament where 77 teams are going to be playing for a million dollars starts and, tomorrow and, yes it starts tomorrow yes. at, at the black card on Saturday I'm going to be streaming all day but there's only one team that's a women's team and it's the former U.S. national team players and they're competing in another group where, I mean, are you going to tune in? I assumed you had your eyes on that. Yeah, no, I think like most of the games are being streamed on Peacock, right? Mm -hmm. And um, YouTube, I think. Yeah. And YouTube and Peacock, yeah. So I've got that. I mean, I'm stoked because there's like teams like, the, you know, and like you've got some like pro teams that are sending like, you know, yeah. you know kind of like their lower tiers, but there are like teams playing to win. And oh, like, yes. I know some of the guys and obviously some of the women competing and like mm -hmm. they have been training hard. Mm -hmm. Also, like, Haley, is... tell me, 7v7 is so much more fun than 11v11. Like it is so much more fun to, to me. It's more fun to watch too. It's mm -hmm. just more action, right? It is. Constant, constant. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's yeah. just constant. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's, just more excited. it's just 
it's just fun. Yeah. yeah, it'll be fun. And then, yeah, the team, there's there's a unique ending where it's like it has to end in a goal because you, once you get to a certain amount of time ended, say it's 5-3, the winning goal number will be six. So it's like the team has to either come back or the one team, it's called the Elam ending and they use it in basketball. They've adapted it to soccer. Interesting. Clearly, yeah, I've got plenty of time to dig into the Wikipedia on this, but talk about um, it, in the growth of the game overall, Haley, because even we talked to you a year ago and we were talking about how crazy it is Aurora's getting these fans. And that seems, you know, like one small little grain of the growth, you know, now seeing other USLW teams like Oakland Soul getting fans, you know, seeing um, the announcement, you know, of multiple pro leagues in the next few years. Just talk about who, how you consume all that news as someone who's trying to work in, you know, the game. Now. Totally. I think basically, right, like you have like all these teams, you have all these cities with interests and like regardless of the levels or like how they're coming in, I think it just genuinely demonstrates right now the appetite that exists for women's soccer, right? Like there is, and even the game generally in the US, like there is such an appetite for watching people compete at the highest level and cities want it, towns want it, right? Like it really stems beyond just like, you know, like players and like a few investors here and there wanting things like there there is this like people just crave being able to watch the game right now and i think it's awesome right like you know i know there's been a lot of like what does this mean what does two pro leagues mean and it remains to be seen like how this will net out and how this will actually work in the space and i think we're all just eager to see right like no yeah. one can predict it nobody knows money's going to play a big part of it but until it really happens we're kind of going to sit here and just say okay like i'm i'm honestly excited to see what happens and because of that you're going to have another five six towns that immediately right up you know like in any year we'll have pro women's soccer and that's that many For more sure. fans that's that many more people and that's really cool and I also think as a player, like more opportunity for you, you're not just going to be like one of the 200 players that maybe gets rostered, you know, in, in NWSL because that those spots are just so tight. So even as a player, it's exciting that you can have more of an opportunity, but it is going to be really interesting to see how it all sure. shapes up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, there, one thing for both of you, like this is really for interesting for players who had to come in and earn spots in NWSL. A couple of things specific about the Super League, at least as they announced it, is one, a European calendar, which they're going to have a winter break. So it's not so different than some of the time we see playing now, but it will be a challenge for Minnesota to be in a league like that. That would be a real barrier. You'd have to have indoor options. But so a European calendar of like spring to or fall to spring and then no draft. That's a unique thing. So for players like you all who are on yeah. the edge of having to try to scrape or say this would have been a place where maybe a team's like, we want you to be the big dog, Danny. We think you can be the starting forward because we're a league that's trying to take steps up. I don't know if you had thoughts on that, either of you. I, and I, I did another interview where I was talking about this a little bit, is A, I do think it's going to take, for any league, like it is going to take like some kind of splash signing. So I'm interested to see who that is. Cause I think yeah. like when this happens is like, you're going to have to pull some names. And even if it's like, you know, I look at it right now. It's like, if, if you got like a Heather O'Reilly to come back and like start uh -huh. and start your team. And you know, some of these people that could even be like player coaches for a bit, mm -hmm. you're going to help it gain traction right away. And it, it'll give it a little bit of validity that I don't think it would have started with otherwise. Um, so I'm yeah. eager to see like what route people take. Cause you're right. You know, there is going to be no draft. So you know, right off the bat, you're going to have this whole group of players being drafted to the NWSL. But like Danny said, like not all those people are going to make it. And there also are going to be a lot of players who don't get drafted that are very, yeah. very talented. And um, I think we're going to see really quickly is like, is there, you know, like, and again, I, I'm asking this rhetorically, this is not what I believe, but like, right. are there and is there enough talented players like we think there are in the USL? It's gambling that there are, that mm -hmm. we're going to be able to fill out an entire, you know, NWSL, we're going to fill out the USL and we're going to have really, really competitive soccer everywhere. And I think that's cool. And I think that makes it cool for things like, like the challenge cup should become more like the men's US open cup. Right. And you compete and you have levels and you have these moments that kind of like make these two leagues compete with each other. I, I think it's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think personally, I don't think there, there's any, bad thing except for the money question that I think we are as players who have were have seen like three different iterations of leagues come through the U.S. before like NWSL really stuck 
like I think we're maybe scarred from that and and feared like you know the USL is Mm -hmm. gonna maybe detract from that and financially maybe make it a little bit more unstable unstable but if we're able to if it is able to come in really solid then I think there's no problem with having more opportunity that's just Mm -hmm. a you know, that's just a really exciting thing. Yeah. Hey, we got maybe the hints of a guest there. Ayo. Ayo, Ayo's always the fourth guest of you. He just barged right in here. So he knows, he knew, he knows the camera's there. He wants the spotlight, baby. Ayo. Yeah. And then another, here's the baby. Here's Ricky. Yeah. Always with the vest on, too. I love it. Ricky. Yeah, he's got to have his little vest on. <laughs> I love it. This is this is Haley's son. How's your son doing, Haley? My son is doing really well. He's looking really cute today. Yeah. yeah. What are your? I mean, what are your thoughts on you know the Rory Soros, the new mascot for Aurora? You know, it's, a, it's you get a little toy, a Rory toy for uh, Ricky to play with. I that's what I need next, and I'm surprised as a community owner. You know what I mean? Like I was thinking. No, oh. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, that's a good I'll, idea. One, one, one thing I was going to mention about the competing leagues, I mean, part of it is it, you have to find um, like different markets that can succeed in different ways. Like the men's side, it, it took you, you have to take losses for a long time. I mean, so it's a challenge. You have to be willing. And the NWSL teams are still taking losses. I'm sure they maybe some are starting to get like Angel City, you know, yearly profit with their game day being so big, but I, it's still so tough. So, you know, it'd be like those teams that make it in the USL championship for men. It, maybe it's a smaller market. It's just a market that didn't quite get there, but um, you know, NWSL is growing too. So, I mean, they're, they're well, incredible as well. Yeah. And I do think the NWSL was able to build because they had like, we had such strict um, salary caps. Like uh-huh. when we were first starting, I mean, the salary cap was like, it was, it was terrible yeah i mean Inhuman. it was horrible and that was like the most you know the most you could make if you weren't on contract with u.s soccer so i think it's going to be interesting because i'm yeah. i would guess usl probably has to do something similar but i haven't seen anything about their salary structures so had, it'll be really interesting when they initially launched they said that the goal was that this would be similar level of pay to the usl championship men which is they now have a they now have a union the women wouldn't have that on that side so that is you know that it's a different thing the men had to work really hard for a couple of years to get um, yeah. what is now a basic equitable I would say level at the championship um, yeah but talk about because look women in the games people in the games have to do multiple gigs Haley does it she does the just women sports also still a coach at Seattle which is which is great how long have you been coaching you're the keeper coach. How long yeah. have you done that now? So this I this was my first fall. So I started uh, last spring. And so like I'm just finished my like second spring. But we had, uh, but yeah, I've been through like one actual season with uh, with the Seattle U team, which has been awesome. Love it. Like long time staff there. 11 minutes from my house. It's been, it's been easy. It's been really cool. Danny, uh, Seattle suffered a 1-0 loss to Portland Pilots. I don't know if you had any commentary on that. From Portland. <laughs> <laughs> we did. <laughs> not a bad loss. Not a bad loss at all. No, I mean UP had a really great season this year. I think they got they made it in the top twenty. So um, you know they're starting to make a comeback too. It's exciting to see. Mm-hmm. No, Seattle you know, did have a good year in the conference. A game. So. Yeah. Go Pilots. Yeah, I think, but Seattle was something like eight, one, and two, or something in in the whack. So I mean, yeah. pretty good year. In the conference. Yeah. yeah, we had a good, uh, good whack season. I had a, you know, fifth year. All, all these like COVID seniors were like 27. Oh, I'm like, we were like the same age. She was only 23. <laughs> That's not true. Yes, but she was that great. Um, but yeah, we have all these like, you know, seniors on our team now that I think are like as old as I am. But yeah, they, yeah, we had a really good team, a really good like leadership group. And it was fun. You know, it was just kind of uh, obviously like every team loses at some point kind of to end your year. I think that is kind of one of the heartbreaking things about college soccer a little bit is like you're playing for this, like there really is only like one ultimate winner. Yeah. Um, So at some point, you know, like everybody's season ends, but overall a very successful season. Um, And it was fun to be part. It was a new challenge too. Obviously I've, you know, worked with like college age keepers before, but never in like such a sort of structured environment. Mm -hmm. College is fun for that. I think, Uh, I think it's totally different than any other type of coaching because you're just like, you know, it's so 
you're in such close quarters for yeah. an extended yes. amount of time. And there's, it's also a really unique part in players and people's lives, you know, where they're like away from family, away from like yeah. anything they've been familiar okay. with in the past. Yeah. So I think that's, that's what makes it really fun. Mm -hmm. Well, we're on the, we mentioned, you know, the Portland Pilots. So now we got to mention Michigan. Danny also has the connection because they're, you know, with, with her partner. Um, Haley, are you the best goalie in the history of Michigan? The college? Oh. I I have some stats to provide. Content. Yeah. You have um, wavering. I know I just really bragged hard, but about my, my on the field women's league. I would definitely <laughs> imagine one of them. Uh, I just first in a lot, Danny. Yeah, she's first in a lot. lot I do categories. think there was one or two. I would imagine. I would imagine. Than I let me let me run down, Haley. Do you know what you're first in? I bet you know some of them. Um, it's the big ones. It's all it's all big ones. So saves, it's, it's man, saves. for like two or three years, I just got clobbered. So no saves. <laughs> saves maybe like things pertaining to saves. I would imagine yeah. that those have to be up there. You're you have you have the most saves of all time. You have the most saves in a season. You have the most saves per game. You have the most the best goals against average. You have the most minutes played. Seven thousand. I'd have to work that out. Like you started a lot of games. Um, yeah, tied for most shutouts in a season. Tied for most wins in a season. So, can I tell a really great story about? Yes. Danny's wonderful wife. Because so Lauren and I lived together, and we lived right by the soccer field, <laughs> and. Lauren would it would be nice because she could just like open the window and like she was a like, soccer player for yeah. everybody's reference yeah she's like not you know what I mean to be fair like you know like she was like oh soccer's not totally her thing which is fine you know but she would like open the window and like wait for it to like pass the halftime whistle and she'd be like okay I guess I'll go check out and then she would like walk down and then walk to the field and like catch the last like 30 minutes yeah and yeah. she'd be there at the end of the game, like, you did a really good job. <laughs> she was focusing, like, focusing sorry, on her game. She was focusing on their basketball game, man. She was. She was like, she was like, man, I'm not going to. I mean, like, I'm like, I kind of get it. You know, if it's not your thing, that's a long time. The, the whole process is long. Yeah. You know, Lauren I, I, was also probably cooking. So she wasn't like, <laughs> she wasn't working on basketball. She was like, I'm going to make a nice meal for Haley to come back to. That was very sweet. Yeah. And she's like, I'm just like not going to bother until, until <laughs> I know it's, it's much closer to the end of the day, to the end of the game there. So yeah, yeah. respect that. It's a good process, honestly. It's a it good is, roommate. But, nice roommate. Yeah, it is. And thanks for uh, the introduction, Haley. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yeah. yeah. I know. I love it. This is my, I'm realizing, and there's no problem at all because of the friends who they are. This is just, you know, a married adult with kids. You, you're not, you can't schedule social calls, but in the context of something for work, we can get it done. And this is I, Danny's right. catching I up with buds. And it's I'm right. It's for right. The ride. I don't have any complaints. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to say, for the sake of this argument, Haley definitely is, with those numbers, I would say the best in Michigan history. I would have to say. I mean, I don't know crazy. what else you could pull out there to say. Crazy. Yeah, it, it, it that. Like it's that old of a program either. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I think it was, yeah. So, yeah, there's been definitely some really good seasons since then. I think, you know, there's been like athletes that have had like good years, um, like Hillary Beal, Beal, she's in the NWSL right now. Yeah. Um. So there's been some like very good keepers. But yeah, I think that it always helps too when you get like the full four. So like I got like, was, yep. you know, playing for four seasons. Yeah. You know, the record of having the record of most saves in a game, you know, there were some tough years. So the very, very best teams, you don't get save stats. It's, like, it's, you do have to be in, in the mix. Yeah. Little, yeah. We, we ended really well. We were like very, very good when I left, but yeah, there were some building years where it's like, you know, like maybe having the most saves in the game is like a tough consolation in a six Oh loss. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, shout out to Meredith Hawkinson, who spent one of those super seniors. She was been at, at Michigan for like a bunch of runs. She's great. She's playing for um, there you go. this summer and I was watching and she's she's really fun to watch. Just a really, you know, intentional and like field general type player. Um, how do you consume the game, Haley? Like, what do you end up? Do you end up watching NWSL games? But you're, you also have to create content. I mean, so do you just listen to podcasts? Do you read stuff about yeah. the game? How do you consume the game? these days i really am like a 
like I love soccer and I will watch it. You know what I mean? Like I will find a way to watch it. I've got every subscription service known to man, like give yeah. me my Paramount, give me my Peacock, give me whatever it is. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. Um, I'm a total junkie of the game um, and I love it. And I will watch the NWSL. I will watch, you know, the super league. I will watch the MLS. Like yeah. if it's on, I'm in, you know, I'm probably watching it, but yeah, with the NWSL, I definitely watch, I think first and foremost, like, I will, it's kind of nice actually, especially with night games being on the West coast. Cause like there's days mm -hmm. where it's like a wet, like today, today's a Wednesday, there are games today and I can just chuck the game on at 3 PM. Same thing like the Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah. You're lucky. Yeah, That's like, like for the old timers. I wish I got all the afternoon games. I know yeah. I get like the early bird soccer special and I'm just like <laughs> delightful. Um, yeah. yeah, that, I mean, I really just, I think first and foremost, like just watch and I watch every chance that I get because mm -hmm. I mean, I enjoy it. So like I can sit there and, you know, whether I'm like fully engaged or whether it's like, I don't want to say like background noise, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that, yeah. like I'm working or I'm doing something else, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, I just like it. And I think you'll, you're probably going to catch me having it on TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a couple questions for you. Cause so one, when I turn on NWSL now, I see like two things that one, the attendance at pretty much everywhere across the country now is just so much higher than even a few years ago. Um, I feel like that has just skyrocketed. So I'm going to start with that question first. What do you feel like has attributed to that? I mean, like I said, I, I think generally speaking, like there is a greater a just like appetite for the game because I think more people want to watch it because I think it's becoming more accessible and I think it's think? starting to you think it's accessibility it's yeah yeah I don't think it's perfect yet but I think like even in like its own communities like an increased coverage increased local coverage and increased community interaction right like there's just these moments now that like it's not perfect I still think it's crazy that like to watch 90% of the NWSL games, I have to have a per, like a subscription to, uh, you know, I have to pay $5.99 a month. A lot of people probably just don't have that. But I do think from like an attendance perspective, you're seeing more and more like in your community, like just living in Seattle. Like I see more billboards. I see more if I, yeah. you know, the Seattle Times, they're covered more in the Seattle Times. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Like there's just yeah. kind of more coverage of the game. And I think that there is like a very real translation between coverage and mm -hmm. people showing up. Um, I also think you're seeing like, you know, and, it, and it's not everywhere, but some of these like places like Gotham right now with like really rising attendance, like the more money that's being invested and the better the team yeah. is playing, the more that it's translating. I, I mean, and look at the, look at Aurora, right? Like yeah. it came in like, guns blazing they put the money in they put the resources in they put the marketing in and it translates like i mean yeah. that's like a prime example of like if you do this the right way like they will come if people know about it they will come i mean there were so yeah. many times after you know where like you could ask somebody in seattle like you know what, what about the women's soccer team and this was ages ago and they'd be like who's that like people yeah. just didn't know and it's that education of it and the coverage of it and seeing it time over time um mm -hmm. and it makes a big difference yeah yeah my second part to the question because i agree with all of that is just the amount of new faces too i watch nwsl and i'm like oh my god i don't know any of these players yeah. which is really exciting so as somebody who's doing content in that how difficult is that to kind of yeah. keep up keep up with you know i think like just in covering it a i think the good news is is i'm not like super direct first um like i'm, I'm not on the kind of the front lines of um social content so like i do i like am thankful for that now because i like i don't have to be perfect like i don't have to know everybody's name yeah if i was like color commentating the game i think that would put a lot more pressure on me but um you know i think just knowing too because you kind of see it happen of like these storylines of okay we'll cover the draft so like i can probably you know i know who got drafted you know i know yeah. who Alyssa is, I know Michelle Cooper is. So you mm -hmm. kind of start to like learn some of these names and it doesn't always translate. And you'll have these very, very cool stories where somebody comes out of nowhere and didn't get drafted mm -hmm. and now they're a starter mm -hmm. um, and it kind of grows over time. But I don't know, I think the league now is like a very fun mix of like these young kids. And then you've got, you know, I think like Lou is about to play her 200th regular season game. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. It's her birthday today too. So shout out to Lou. Ooh. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, I, I wanted to ask one thing, just you are one of the community owners. So, I mean, I'm sure it's not like you're doing because you want, you know, like 
I mean, look, maybe down the road, that's a real a financial investment payoff, but I think mostly it's the payoff of being a part of it. So I'm curious for you, like just seeing the, how they did last year, seeing the talent they added, how it's going into year two, you know, they had 5,000 plus on a Wednesday night during the school year still, Love you know? Um, so how are you reviewing your organization as a shareholder? Yeah. You know, I think, I mean, a, like knowing too, like that, like Seattle, you, we weren't even out of schools. So like already knowing too, that there's not like the, it kind of hasn't even hit full swing yet. Yeah. And I think to start that way, knowing that you're still kind of having people funneling in players funneling in, um, you know, like, and just kind of like kids are still in school too. Like you aren't even really in this like full summer market of like, who's going to be coming out to games right. um, to start out with 5,000 fans is awesome. And to have like such a, I don't know. I don't, am I allowed to say ass kicking, right? Yeah, like, it, to like win so decisively. I also think that's such a fun showing. That's fun for the fans. Yeah. And it's going to make people want to like come out time and time again, because like people love it when their team is winning. Um, mm -hmm. And so far that's what's happening. So, you know, as the community shareholder, I forgot my name card. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's cool. And I like, I love that. It's like a female staff. Like there, there's just so many things to be really, really excited about for um, yeah. this season. Yeah, it's the talent. And I'm sure I don't know if you've caught it. You're going to have to, though, Haley, because I don't know if you know your buddy's doing the color for it. So the second game is today, you know, tonight. And I listened to it. Danny was doing great. But yeah, she, you're going to have to tune in and, and see some of this. How is the is it? And I've never done color. So, Dan, like, is it hard? Like, you know, like the stats, the names, the research, like, how are you finding that? I don't mean to flip this on. No, it's <laughs> No, I um, honestly play by play. Um, Jake, who I work with, he is like, that is the hardest job in the world. I don't know how he keeps up with it. He has like poster boards laid out all over the right. place. He yeah. has to like reference things, especially for like the away teams. That is such a job because yeah. you can get comfortable with Minnesota Aurora players, but the away teams, I mean, some of them don't even have like a roster posted. So right. um, yeah, so like, that's so shout out to him. I feel like the color I'm getting used to, especially I'm, I'm like, it's lucky that I watched the team and I followed the team so closely last year that there is so many returning players. Um, I think we have like 17 that have returned. So that makes it a little easier. Um, but that's not to say I, I definitely was nervous. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I bet. Of course. Yeah. Well, I you know, it's a, it's not like I did, you know, Matt and I did one, like a college stream in the fall where, you know, it really is more just like parents and a few coaches watching it, you know, there's thousands of people watching this one. So it's not like, and it was, I don't, you know, I don't know if they'll release anything about local TV, probably not, but I was watching the YouTube stream back on the Fox nine YouTube page and there was over a thousand just on the YouTube. Right. And so, yeah. like, um, and I'm sure that went up. So yeah, it, I mean, getting the views, getting a lot yeah. of exposure for the players. Who knows? Um, Next up, ESPN. We'll get yeah, on Sports. Yeah, we yeah, need to get yeah. on Sports Center again. Yeah, Kennedy yeah, Faulkner had a crazy goal that. Um, that was a was, banger. That's, that was a that's banger. part of your equal time support. Is the only reason we had the angles of that because Matt went to Chicago, set up cameras behind each goal, and so we had the turnaround of it just pure upper ninety, Haley. If you see it, um, I think it was it two was center back hit a banger from like I don't know forty yards out. He's someone who lefty. This, yeah, this spring, um, Haley, she was playing at Canberra United in the A-League. Oh, awesome. Kennedy Faulkner, she's a former Canada Youth International in UCLA. She's one of our Blue Bloods that we got this year, for sure. And yeah. she's looking very good. Yeah. Um, take a quick break to read this ad from our sponsor, Pence Homes. This show is brought to you by Pence Homes, as you see in the top corner. Whether you're buying or selling or looking to do some projects in your current home, Nate and Lydia can help you find what you need. Need financing for a basement remodel? Looking to add a second bath or even a workspace now that you're working from home? Pence Homes and their preferred lender, Angie Shearer, with Luminate Financing can help find the right financing tool for you. Go to PenceHomes.com or learn more about them on social media at Pence Homes. And Pence Homes also got into being a sponsor of the Autograph Alley uh, line at Aurora, seeing how there's good move because there are hundreds of kids and hundreds of parents. So kids yeah. move by the realtors. Um, in the first Where there two are games, kids, there are parents. There are, it's so fun. It's one of the things, I don't know if we mentioned it when we talked to you last year, it's something you hear in the stadium that there are a lot of kids and there's a lot of people with more feminine voices because you hear the tone of cheering. And so you actually literally know 
like the crowd is not just a bunch of dudes because you can yeah. actually hear it and everything and it's just kind of cool it's like very literal it's a little high pitch kid yeah it's just a little bit more like you know but um in the first two games 21 players have played for Aurora. um and there's only one player t harris who's a new vice captain as a center back um, she was a Herman Trophy nominee, um, Haley from Kent State, but she's the only one to play two dining minute halves. Um, we're a little short at center back now, but that's crazy depth, Danny, right, to be using this early. And we, we expected it because, you know, Coach Lukic has said it's, she feels even more confident in her depth this year. Yeah. I mean, with the roster even goes beyond like 28 players, essentially. I mean, she's uh -huh. really like looking at switching things up you know, every game and you'll see like even players that are on the bench this year. I mean, this game are different than players that were on the bench in the last game. So she really is like making transitions all over. And this starting lineup is going to look totally different than the first two did. So I, um, I love to see that. I do think the score lines have allowed her to be able to do that. Yeah. Should they be closer games? I think we'll start to see a more consistent yeah. roster um, and a consistent like starting 11 specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's when you're winning by multiple goals, she's able to sub the keeper in these games. She's confident in doing that. Um, I wonder for you, Haley, Aurora was like this last year. They're looking like it again, where very spread out attack assists and goals can come from so, so many players. I think there were like seven, there were like 17 contributors last year. Maya Hansen has three goals. Cat Rap has two. Mariah when Hannah Adler, Kennedy Faulkner, Zabilich, all a goal in the first two games. You as a keeper, when you're playing attacks like that, you know, how much worse is that, that you just feel like at any point you get, you could get caught by a stray and, and give one up? Yeah. I mean, I think like, you know, you're playing against a team that is putting up, you know, four and five and six goals against like all the teams that they're playing. I know that it's a short season, but even last year, just dominating so many games. Um, you know, I say like as a goalie, you can have like a great game and still lose 5-0. So, um, you know, sure. it, it, it could be it could be tough. But yeah, I mean, it's not like a great feeling necessarily after a game where you're like, wow, I just played a team that could. They had so many different types of attack. They had so many different players um, who can score goals in ways they can score goals. I think it's just really a testament to the environment that's created. You know, it's a it's a testament to like how many players know that they might not get as many minutes, but they want to go and train and be there every single day because they're like, that's, you know, even if my minutes are maybe more limited than I'll, I get elsewhere, my environment's going to be that much better there. Um, yeah. And that's just, you know, again, a testament to the, the coaching staff and just the environment that's been created. And I'll follow up on the, on the other side of that. If you're a goalie for Aurora, how are you kind of still staying because you're not taking in as many shots and yeah. you know that's an equally kind of tough position to be in um but can you talk about some experience for you like what that's like on the other end and how you stay involved in the game and how you still make yourself known as a goalie even though you're not taking a ton of shots absolutely i think you a it puts a lot more pressure on you like in possession so working on your feet helping your team keep the ball your communication um and I think it's also, I mean, just great training for like your focus. Like, I think it's really easy to shut down when you're not as involved where it's really, really easy to stay focused and stay locked in when you know there's a threat coming at any moment. So there's a lot of things developmentally that you can take away from these games, even if you are not touching the ball a lot. Um, and with that being said too, again, it is a choice, right? And you're making the choice that my training environment and the coaching I'm going to receive here, the people around me that are going to make me better day in and day out from a training side. Like I'm, I'm willing to trade that off and be here knowing that I might not have the most action. Um, but I think you'll see it where there is eventually going to be games or a game where the goalkeepers are tested. It might not mm -hmm. happen right away. It might not happen yet, but there is going to be a moment where these keepers are going to be called upon. And again, the environment they've been in, the training they've done kind of that focus that they've been able to, you know, sort of build up and establish, it's going to get called on. Um, yeah. And again, it might take one game, it might take a month, but you know that a good team is is going to come eventually. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't say a good team because they're going to yeah. play good teams, but yeah. you know that their match is going to come eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, and the W League has a scary gaps in each area where there are certain teams in each division that are really – focused on clearly giving people like a step into a pro contract this fall, really doing that. And then there's always a couple teams that aren't as much focused on that, but rather giving their youth and academy players 
just a context to get some reps. And so that's why like in every division, you're seeing some huge results, which means teams really have to prepare for the playoffs where it just is going to be different, way different when you face the Glens or California storm or, you know, Indy 11 again. It's so, yeah, that's a unique mental challenge. I would think of keeping up, but also trying to learn in those games that are easier, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, talk about Danny. I don't know if you have had any, context from coach Lukic about this or also I'm curious just your thoughts on it but um, a little switch they've done is there was a, at least a lot of the time I don't know if it was the whole game but Kenzie Langdock who's the captain coming from right back last year she's a right-footed player she plays well with her left but she's playing on the left now because she's somewhat of that outside back who develops the passing game in the final third and our other outside back Abby Ostrom kind of hangs back more as the mm-hmm. defender and I was just curious if you had any thoughts on that Danny as her moving into the left side kind of as that facilitator because she doesn't play the wing so much. She kind of cuts in to be like a little 10, you know, or eight moving in. I don't know if you had any insight or thoughts on how Luke. Well, I don't necessarily know Nicole's thought on it. Um, Pop press is on it outside of the fact that I think they're trying players in a lot of different positions. Like I said, the starting lineup today is going to look really different than the last starting lineup we saw last Wednesday. And even against, um, you know, in their game this last weekend. So I feel like she's definitely still trying things out. Having said that, I think with Kenzie Langdock on the left side, the thing that I thought that uh, her she did really, really well is her and Mariah Wynn together on the left side. Mariah Wynn, to me, has been like a standout player this year. I feel like she has been one of the best um, attacking players on the team like day in and day out and she has been consistent she's like constantly going to goal I think she's been extremely creative I've been very impressed with her and I think that has allowed um, Langdog to have a little bit more freedom to be able to like pop into the tent a little bit or come back out or they've been yeah. able to like adjust around each other really well and I thought that has brought some really unique mm-hmm. flair up the left side um, but I don't necessarily know if um, if that's like what Nicole and coach Lukic wants out of every game. You know, I think yeah. every game is probably going to present a little differently. So mm-hmm. I'll be curious to see how that shakes out. I mm-hmm. think. Well, and it probably, I would guess Haley has a little bit to do with these games where we expect to have, Aurora expects to have the ball more and they expect to be passing the ball. You could see they set up their midfield that way as well of having like two really creative players on top of one, just more holding player. Um, and so a game like against Third Coast, we're playing right from Racine, Wisconsin. They've had a bit of a rough start to the W League. Three games, three losses, one goal, four, 13 against. So like you as a so then if you're thinking of the coaching staff prepping for a good like focused uh, growth of a performance, what do you think they're focusing on like, in a game like this where you maybe might overlook it? Yeah, I think, A, you can look at getting players' minutes, right? You can look at trying different things, whether it's putting people in different positions, trying different formations. Um, I think it kind of gives you a little bit of an opportunity to test and learn a little bit more or, you know, trying out certain things like, you know, like you said, like a player having a little more freedom to think they can bomb on because they know that their players in the back will be able to cover it. They maybe aren't as threatening moving forward. And you just have a little bit more ability to experiment with the game um and see the way it goes because i do think it's game like this if you play a four back you can try a three um because there might be a time in a game you know in the playoffs where you go down a goal and you're like all right we actually do need to switch to a three back and you can look back and say okay we have gone into it and we have played this in games before and we have tried it so Mm -hmm. i think it's a it's a fun chance to to try some different things personnel and kind of scheme wise Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah I think that that's going to be, I I do think that it's a tough challenge going into these kind of games because you can't, you absolutely cannot overlook it. Like it is a thing where you still, the game starts zero, zero, right? So like you have to, you have to change that scoreline before you can make any adjustments. Having said that, I think that Nicole probably is like, we do want to try some things with this game. We want to see how these players work together. Maybe we want to try a couple new players. I do think there's been some injuries that, she's trying to save some players as well. So, um, you know, so I think, yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting game, but that's the fun part about, about these leagues is like, it always, I mean, you know, it starts zero zero and every team has a chance to show up. So, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe, uh, maybe RKC is also doing some back channeling on their end. 
Right. Now they still have players that are just finishing school. So like totally. these rosters are still changing a lot yeah. and they might be like, Hey, we've got to, we played our first couple games with a bunch of high school students that, you know, yeah. That we that aren't going to be maybe our full time roster. So for sure, yeah, it is, they've it is. also had they've had this is their fourth of five away like away games to start oh, the season. Brutal, and yeah. sometimes yeah, brutal. And sometimes teams, especially in this league, like they don't travel a full roster. They don't travel mm-hmm. a you know they don't travel all of their players. Or like you said, maybe their players haven't come in yet. So yeah. you never know. It's hard. Yeah. No, it'll it that will be a, a factor today. We saw that with every home game, basically, of just the depth and ability to survive. It's it's not look, we can we're from Minnesota. We're it's only in the summer a little bit. It's pretty hot here today. Like it's high of like 88. So like not irrelevant in terms of we used to, I, I feel like I could notice that in the second half of games and you know, seeing the depth being tested. It should yeah. in the it'll the sun will go down and the second half will be cooler, but um it was kind of like last, the opener was a crazy windy day, Danny. It was like you could actually see crosses changing. Um, I don't know what it was the hard for was. goalies to clear it out. Like it was hard for Rochester's goalie to actually like they you missed know, punt it past the, half. It was they crazy. came out and missed in the box multiple times because it yeah. part of it partly was that. I bet. Yeah, I there I had some Midwest playing at Northwestern, playing at Minnesota, playing in Minnesota, you yeah. know, and again, like in the fall, especially where, yeah, I remember games fondly like that, where, I mean, I remember one where like I had a teammate had to hold the ball on the yeah. six line for goal yeah. kicks. And it yeah. got to the point where if I kicked it, it would go out of bounds, like behind me for a corner kick. So I was just trying to kick it as hard as I could out of bounds, <laughs> to give up a throw in. <laughs> the le- the, yeah, like the best of the worst. That's when you, that's, that's, terrible. Crazy. that's when you throw out low, right? You throw it yeah. down. Like, it, yeah. Even that, like, yeah, it was just nuts. Like I was just trying to like, I honestly was like, my goal was like, give up a throw in, give up a throw in because yeah. like I, if I kicked it, it would, it could have gone in my own goal. That's yeah. crazy. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, and to, I will say for it being cooler in the second half, maybe that will help if the Minnesota Roar because they, in their first two games, have been much more of a first half team, which is different from the team last year. Like last year, I felt like they were definitely a second half team. Mm-hmm. And this year, they are definitely coming out there like right off the bat scoring, you know, in right. the first half. And the second half slows down a ton. So I think that that later in the season is with and especially against better teams is going to be yeah. something that they're going to have to deal with mm-hmm. they have their chemistry and their confidence starting from a place of like of mid-season because of their the core from last year so yeah that is the contrast with like rkc is their first year traveling like you said they're going to settle into themselves um like the other teams do but um you know minnesota Aurora probably will too so <laughs> we'll see we'll keep yeah. seeing the level raise yeah um yeah, well, I appreciate. Do you have any other questions for Haley, except for we need another help solo story, obviously. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll let you answer. Yeah. I'll let you do that, and then I'm going to say, Haley, tell us what you're doing these days. Tell us how. Tell the people how they can find you. Right. Uh, you know how they can follow what you're doing, all that. Yeah. Um, well, again, I'm I'm actually trying to tweet more. Um, I kind of like you know fell off the Twitter game for a while. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so you can follow me at H. Kottmeyer. Mm-hmm. Um, I am now getting into tweeting photos of Ricky, um, <laughs> trying to do a little bit of, you know, talking about the NWSL. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can find me on social there. Um, and then, you know, like you said, I am continuing to just be as much as I can, like a sports and women's soccer um, advocate, uh, you know, just women's sports. Um, I'm doing some camps this summer, uh, with West coast goalkeeping, which I'm very stoked about. So for those in the greater Seattle area, if, yeah. you're listening to, if you just happen to be listening to the Minnesota broadcast from the greater <laughs> Seattle area, you should definitely check out our camps. Um, I'm very excited about those currently doing all the planning and yeah, I got a little time off from the college soccer, but you know. When are I, you gonna get up here? You gotta come, gotta come watch a Aurora game. Gotta come see uh, your nephew. I gotta see my nephew. I do. You know, and Ricky's a really good flyer now. So can he come too? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we got a backyard. Come on. There you go. I love yeah. it. You, Make it easy. You'd have a blast at the games. Um, it would be an absolute yeah pleasure to have you. We'll we'll use you for all the content you want to use, or you can just hang out and have a good time. Come to the yeah. Blackhearts. Um, 
Yeah. So for everybody with the game tonight, uh, I will be, I'll be at the black card after for all the Ravantelet supporters. It was fun last week, Danny. I can't get into details because I respect the profession, but I met some friends of Rory, the mascot. Oh, and so Ooh. it's, I'm respecting the secrecy, but of, okay. of this theoretical friend of Rory's, it's very intense, but it was fun. You to don't meet. know who the mascot is. That's the whole thing. You can't say, but I might've talked to some, it's all, but it was very, it was very interesting, and they're very allegedly. Passionate. You allegedly they're, did that. They're very good at their work, and there's multiple people. There are multiple people doing it, and yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. But so I will be there. I'll be out with the parents too before the game if people want to hang out. But um, tune in on Fox Nine or the Fox Nine Fox Nine Plus Fox Nine YouTube channel. You get to see Danny calling the game today, and I did want to yep. tell people a couple other hits of games this weekend. Tomorrow, the U.S. Women Thunder Twenty play in qualifying for their World Cup. There's a Minnesotan, Maddie Dalene, who has scored four goals in the last two games. So Matt, my brother, the big dog, got all excited. He's in the Dominican Republic right now. He was texting me, he somehow got through customs. He does not speak Spanish, but he will be trying to get some uh, content down there. And then for folks, and you can absolutely come to the Black Heart to watch that, it's on FS2. Um, and then this weekend in WPSL, the two big favorites in the Northern Conference, Minnesota Thunder host Salvo SC last year's champs. That's a stream on Sunday that we'll put the details out. And then in the UPSL West, we have too many leagues, Haley. These are all leagues in Minnesota. UPSL Midwest West, which is a real name of a conference. West West. Midwest West. I'm assuming there's going to be Midwest that. East eventually, but not yet. <laughs> Tonka, Tonka Fusion Elite play at Northern Tide. Those are the two unbeaten teams in the UPSL. Lot and breath. A lot of game going on. We appreciate your time, Haley. Thank you so much. And everybody, yeah, pay attention to Just Women's Sports. It is a wonderful way to get NWSL action, but also, of course, WNBA everything. They have everything over there. So appreciate your time so much, Haley. Thank you, yeah, guys. Thank you. And, yeah, you know, go Aurora.